Welcome back to A Case for the Law of War. Mm. It's my favourite channel. Thanks. Welcome back to A Case for Books. Today I am doing something a little bit different, which I am very excited about. This is my very good friend Rosalind. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself. So I am Rosalind Yanna. I am an author, uh, primarily of the book Notes on Being Teenage, and I'm a journalist and a poet and a friend of Anna's. Yeah. And, formal um, title. Formal title. That's the most important out of all of that list. So. Our friendship was cemented quite quickly by the fact that we have quite similar taste in books mm -hmm. and we talk about it constantly. So we have decided to start the Good Book Club. Where we get together and basically have the conversations we were having anyway, but we have them on camera so you can join in with them. Exactly. We call it the Good Book Club because there's not going to be a theme to the books we pick. They are going to be the books that we think are good and we want to talk about. We are also not going to promise to do it with any regularity. No, or we pattern. are not. <laughs> uh, we've come up with some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, they're things we want to talk about, not things that we think we have. The answers to yeah and not things that we think we have the authority to have any kind of definitive opinion <laughs> yes. on just like a book club like with less wine this morning maybe um, wine sometimes maybe but wine. we're filming this on a sunday morning yeah so, so that would be a little out of the ordinary so without further ado without the book ado. that we're going to start this with is yeah. the power by naomi alderman we've got two questions that we're going to do in every video that we do that can be applied to any book and we've got two questions that we come up with which are specific to the power Indeed. so First question, to try and get a sense of the book, is how would you describe this book in one line to a friend? So I've written mine down because I didn't want to get it wrong. <laughs> so my description is, it's an unnerving exploration of electricity, extreme belief, gender dynamics, and the corrosive consequences of power. Very good. And um, what would yours mine be? Mine is, it is a sharp, uncompromising mm. look at a world where women are physically stronger that resists the easy narrative. That's a really good answer, and you memorised it. So, next question is, basically, what's the deal with this book? Yeah, and we wanted basically a question here that is looking at why, uh, why a publisher is pushing a book in a certain way, um, what's being said about it. So, Ross, what is the deal with this what book? What is the deal with this book? <laughs> Um, so one of the things that we were talking about is the fact that it's been compared quite a lot to The Handmaid's Tale, which mm -hmm. is one of those books, like a lot of others, that gets bandied around all the time, where it'd be like, this is like the secret history, this is like Gone Girl. Yeah. Um, but this actually has more of a resonance, Right, it? it warrants the comparison. Mm -hmm. And for several reasons. One, there's a real link with Atwood, because Margaret Atwood is Naomi Alderman's mentor, which I think you can really feel in the book. Yeah, definitely. And as you can see, it's actually got this like lovely, shiny quote on the cover from yes. Margaret, talking about how great it is. We're both horribly envious that she has Margaret Atwood as a mentor. Like, how do you get Margaret Atwood as a mentor? I know, what a goddess. Margaret, are you watching? Hi Margaret, <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, it also warrants the comparison because I think like The Handmaid's Tale, often dystopias come at a point that is very necessary and very relevant and alongside this being about uh, populist politics and who we choose to believe in and who we put a lot of faith in. It's also, you know, it's obviously about gender, um, but unlike uh, The Handmaid's Tale, uh, it looks at bodily autonomy in a very different, very clever way, literally through just flipping the switch yeah. on how power works and ultimately how power corrodes. So the next two questions are specific to this book and inevitably will be a little bit more spoilery, although we're talking about broad ideas, so it's not going to be a really in-depth discussion of plot. Yeah, we're not going to go, by the way, this is the thing that happens on the last page. Actually, Sorry about that. No, we are going to talk about oh, that. Oh, we are actually going to do that. That's the only explicit okay. spoilery other thing. Other than that, <laughs> we will try our best. The next question is kind of three questions. Mm -hmm. They're all linked. And mm -hmm. it is, what makes a book feminist? Is this a feminist book? Does it even matter? That's a lot of questions. Yes. And is a book feminist is a pretty tricky question. Yeah, because I feel like you could you could either go down the route of trying to uh, take some kind of broad definition of feminism and apply that to a book. You could say, does it pass the Bechdel test? Mm -hmm. Is it um, an interesting representation of lots of different female characters? Is it intersectional? Yeah. Um, or does a book have to be about gender to be feminist? Yeah, exactly. Or can it just be implicit in being a well-rounded, really cohesive and interesting exploration of more, one? Is it more, it would be easier to say a book is not feminist? Yeah, it's much easier to say, oh, that book is yeah. you know. And is a book feminist purely by not being sexist? Or is it like a grey area where it's neither problematic nor feminist? Basically, we're just asking a lot more questions than we're we answering. We really know the answer to this. 
Um, but in some ways, I feel like the last part of that question is more important here, which is, does it matter? Yeah, because <laughs> this is absolutely a book about gender, and it is mm-hmm. a book about gender in our world, and it is a book about gender in a future world that is absolutely rooted, as most dystopias are, in our current present situation. In that, I don't really feel it's a feminist book, but I feel it is a book that draws on uh, feminist ideas. I think one of the really interesting things about the book is whatever, wherever you're starting from in terms of how you see gender and feminism, it will make you rethink it. Yes, and it will also make you crucially have a discussion. So I'm not sure how much we've actually answered the questions, even to the slightest degree. No, in fact, I feel like we are both slightly more confused than when we started filming mm, this segment. Yeah, I have more questions. So our last question mm. is mm. a little bit more about like kind of writing and structure, mm. and it is, why do we love fiction that tells us it's fiction? Oh. So this book is, it starts and it ends with letters between a writer called Naomi and another writer called Neil. And it sets up the bulk of the book as a novel that Neil has written and he is sending it to Naomi for feedback. Yeah, which ties in really neatly to what we were talking about earlier because it is, it's a well-established technique. Yeah. Uh, the Handmaid's Tale makes great use of this. Um, and what we're really interested in is Yes, I guess this sense of intrigue that we have in authors who very consciously flag uh, the fact I'm telling that, you a story. Yeah, this is a story, this is made up. Or alternatively, that the story I am constructing from you is being built by a historian or yeah. is based on dodgy research mm-hmm. or is somehow much more unreliable than, we, than you might have thought it was. And we both, as well, have a distinct soft spot for books which are very playful with storytelling. Yeah. Right at the start, it's like, this is a novel. I am saying as much about storytelling and fiction as I am about gender mm-hmm. and politics. Mm-hmm. Opening the book and being uh, confronted with something like that can also be a little bit perplexing as a reader, when, especially when you've got these people going, it's this book about like, gender right. and electricity, and you're going, who are, who and are these letters this from? letter yeah. that doesn't feel like what you think the story's gonna be. Mm. Um, but we both agreed that the ending warrant the use of it yeah and really. that the last letter and the last mm-hmm. line mm-hmm. is just very well pitched it works really well partly because the end of the kind of the end of the novel within the novel mm-hmm. is pretty bleak and the letters let it not be a completely horrifying reading experience <laughs> by having this it's actually it's quite a Jeanette Winterson thing to do mm-hmm. to actually have this sense of like worlds repeating themselves in cycles uh, as we said it's something that happened in The Handmaid's Tale the idea that society is kind of renewing itself and I think giving a sense of ending beyond the ending is quite helpful mm-hmm. um, and also I guess gives you another way of thinking about gender too because it's, it's talking about gendered writing and who writes what and who is believed in yeah. what they write so there are some thoughts about the power. More questions than answers and we would love to know your thoughts. If you haven't read the book hopefully it's inspired you to have a look. There are, uh, there's an awful lot more going on in the book that we've talked about, we've just picked out a couple of things and again if you have thoughts about anything else to do with it please do comment below, we would love to hear about it. We hope you find it interesting and enjoyable and we will be back at some point soon with another good book.